Dr. Robert Negrin is an associate editor for Blood. My name is Robert Negrin from Stanford University. I run the bone marrow transplant program and take care of patients with serious hemologic cancers and also uh, supervise a research group uh, that's focusing on learning how to do bone marrow transplants more effectively. We do a lot of different types of research. Uh, my own personal laboratory focuses on uh, more animal modeling systems to try to understand the benefits and yet the challenges of bone marrow transplantation. And then we also have a large clinical research effort where we bring new ideas to the clinic and learn how to do better. My laboratory is aimed at trying to understand a central paradox in bone marrow transplantation. And that is what we've learned that a successful bone marrow transplant involves the new immune system from the donor recognizing the malignancy in the patient and rejecting it, something we call the graft versus tumor effect. Uh, what we are challenged with is that sometimes the uh, cells from the donor um, recognize the recipient and cause a serious problem called graft versus host disease. And so the central problem that my laboratory is focused on is how do we understand these two processes? Are they different? How similar are they? How different are they? What can we do to try to um, enhance the benefit of a bone marrow transplant and reduce the risks? The way we've addressed this, I think, is particularly interesting, and we've tried to image this process. That's what, what a lot of my laboratory does, is focused on trying to understand where these cells go when they're injected into a recipient. And we've developed a system that we can monitor the, the, the growth and migration of these different cell populations in animal models uh, in real time. And that's been a, a really exciting part of, of the, some of the work that we've done. We have lots of ways that we can uh, manipulate those animal model systems to create the genetic strains that give us unique insights to really learn about how mechanistically how things work. And so they're, they're a huge resource to try to understand the underlying biology that's going on uh, that helps us to uh, extrapolate and develop new treatments. What we've learned is that both B cells and T cells play a major role in the success and the failure of a bone marrow transplant. And B cells and T cells rearrange the receptors into unique sequences. And through sequencing, we can now identify these different populations of cells and really learn about the repertoire of T cells that uh, respond to, let's say, in a graft versus host disease setting or in a graft versus tumor setting. And, and one of the, the major questions in the field is, are these cells the same? Or how different are they? How much overlap is there? And ultimately, what we hope to be able to learn is what are these cells seeing? What are the T cells seeing that allow them to reject a complex disease like leukemia? What are they recognizing? Can this give us new targets that we could make new drugs uh, and perhaps learn how to do this in a simpler way uh, by understanding how the immune system is actually working? I think the journal Blood uh, gives people a huge opportunity to publish their work. And so it's a great accomplishment for people in my laboratory to finish a project and get it published in a, in a high quality journal like Blood. Much of the work that we do, although focused on, on blood disorders, has, has broad implications in clinical medicine.